it was either our first or second like basketball workout and then you know, I felt the same exact thing, like the same exact fast heartbeat. And that was my first time feeling it in years. So, you know, I was just like, all right, press the little button on the heart monitor. And, you know, I kept practicing, I was cool. And then I would say it was maybe the next day or a few days after, you know, I get a call from the, from the trainer. He's like, you need to come to the facility right now. And then I got there and he walked over to the, the medical building with me. And he's like, I need you to call your mom and your dad. You know, I called my mom. I said, Mom, you need to come to UCLA. Like, they're about to tell us something. Like, I, cause I honestly forgot I had the heart monitor on, cause I was so used to being like, fine and playing with it. So my mom came, had my dad on Facetime. We walk in the room, and it's like a big slideshow, bunch of people, b bunch of doctors in a circle in like white, white jackets, and then you know, it's just a picture of a, of like a heart. They told me, they were like, you can play and honestly be fine. Nothing might ever happen. There's been a lot of people who have this, they don't know, and they played a successful life of sports. And then there's some people who got surgery. So my first thing was, I'm not about to get no heart surgery, so I might just live with it. I worked all this way up, just won state championship for my high school, first one in like 20 something years. Uh, ESPN put me as the number one player in California. You know, I'm staying home. like. Season's about to start, we start a workout, so all my friends are here, and then, boom, I can't play basketball no more, so. Went home with that, and you know, I kind of thought, I was like, I got workouts tomorrow. If I put my shoes on, and this is the last time I play basketball, like, that'll be crazy, because they just told me about it yesterday, so, you know, I told my coach and the trainer, I was like, let me get the surgery. When I was a kid, um, you know, I, I would have a lot of fast heartbeats, like, during, like, recess, or even in class, randomly. I missed a lot of days of school just because of this. Like my heart would be fast and I'd wake up, I'd be in the hospital. Doctors couldn't find out what it was. And then finally I got something called a heart ablation. Like a year later, maybe I was like six or seven. I think it was harder telling everybody in my family and like releasing it to the public. Cause I knew people were gonna be like, what's wrong with Sharif? Why isn't he playing? So, so much was going through my mind. I'm like, Am I ever gonna play basketball again? I gotta get a heart surgery. Am I gonna make it through this surgery? Like it was just so much that was racing through my head that I feel like I wasn't I wasn't the same for a long time. I feel like I was in a dark place and I was I was good at hiding it until I released it to the public. Like and everybody's talking about it. Literally everywhere I go, people are talking about it. So that's when I started to show it. Like people were like, after a few days, people were like, okay, don't say nothing to Sharif. I don't even look at his way, because I was just, I was just like, in a little rage moment. Like, I was just so like, worked up and so mad I couldn't play. And there's people kept bringing it up and I was already scared, so. We had finals. I feel like it was hard for me to focus on school too. Because I'm in my final, trying to figure out the answer. And I'm thinking about, I gotta get surgery in 20 something days. Like every single day got closer, the more and more scared I was. And I just, it was, yeah. That was really the feeling was just being scared. I was just waking up, they, they uh, were teaching me how to walk again. And my dad, he was like, if you come back from this, he's like, you're the baddest man on the planet. At first I didn't really hear him, but as like I started to be more and more conscious of what was going on, you know, I, that was like literally the only thing I kind of remember from that surgery, from the whole process. He's like, you come back from this, you're the baddest man on the planet. So once I, that kind of clicked in my mind, I'm like, yeah, but come on, let's walk. Like, I couldn't even sleep because I'm like, I need to get out the hospital. That was my first thought. I need to get out the hospital. I hate the hospital. <laughs> I need to go home. So they would come in. Are you ready to walk? Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting up by myself. Like, I'm, I feel like it's just something in me that just really drove me into getting out the hospital first. And then I got so used to routine that I was like, you know, I'm going to just take this all the way. And they're like, there's, there's a test you have to get past. You gotta walk a little bit farther every day. So, you know, I was supposed to be in the hospital for about three weeks. I think I made it out in, in like eight days. I was so determined to get out. They asked me to walk, I wanna walk. I wanna go outside, get some fresh air. Like I wanna do something. So I feel like once he told me that, I was just like, you know, I gotta, I gotta come back from this just to be an inspiring person. Still standing, waiting for this moment, better take advantage. 
Think you falling off? Show them your balance. Show them your passion. Move forward, not back. Even though at times I didn't feel like I was going to be able to play basketball again, like I had to kind of trick myself in the, and tell myself things to make sure that I play basketball again. So I feel like that was the most important thing I did after getting that surgery. After I left UCLA, I was kind of scared to even try to transfer because I nobody's going to take a kid coming off a of heart surgery, but you know, LSU was still interested because I just wanted to get a, a fresh start after the whole surgery thing. I wanted to get out of LA so I can kind of find out who I really am again because it's a part of my new life, so. You know, I've always wanted to play in the NBA and looking back at it, like, people can talk about the G League all they want. That's still some of the best basketball players in the world. Like, I never thought I'd even be in a position to play pro basketball after that surgery, you know, Ignite uh, looking after me and, and helping me develop. It helped so much and, you know, I'm just, proud of where I am and I'm just happy they, they gave me a chance to show and you know they really wanted to showcase that I was healthy too. I feel like they were on my side and, and that's the first time I felt like a whole team and group like staff was actually on my side to help me because they know what I went through and they care for me so Ignite helped me a lot. At LSU I wore 24 the year before that so you know I'm gonna do anything to uh, to show my love for him, and I'm not doing it for no pictures or nothing like that. Actually, it actually means something for me, and he means a lot to me. It's because he was always around. We went to the to the Staples Center, and at first I didn't really think no one was gonna be there. But when I say the whole city of LA was at the Staples Center, just chanting Kobe, Kobe, and the big like flowers and all that in the middle, like you know, I, that's when I didn't feel alone. I'm like, okay. The whole city's feeling just like this, and you know, it's just a—it's just something I still don't believe to this day. Like, and I always look at that Instagram message because like he never got to read it, so it's just—it's just crazy that I got that message before. But I'm also kind of mad at myself that I slept in that day because I feel like that kind of sticks with me too. Because if I would have woke up a few hours earlier, I could have answered. He could have possibly said something back. So like, I sent the last message and he didn't get to see it, so that kind of sticks with me. playing one full season pro, I'm about to get another full season pro and just keep building from there. So I gotta really take it day at a time. Never let anybody tell you you can't do anything. Like it sounds pretty simple, but if you really think about it, like if you believe in yourself, you can do whatever you want. I don't care if people told me I'm never gonna make it to the NBA. I'm never gonna do this, I'm never gonna do that. I'm gonna still try. Like I'm gonna try till I can't try no more. So, you know, I wanna get to the NBA for my personal goals and you know, for my family goals. And that's something I've always said. You know, when I get there, you know, I just want to make a name for myself and just impact basketball in a different way and just, you know, just show the world I can I can do this. So no matter what goes on, I don't care what I went through a few years ago like this. Just show people like I still got it. I just feel like I've been having to prove a lot of people wrong and I feel like I'm I like this side of, of life where you gotta prove. <laughs>